the most, most, most simple person is. You don't know where the sheer and the coming world. Hello, holy brothers and sisters. This week's Torah portion is Parshat Ekev. And one of the things that appears in this week's portion is that God lists the consequences of certain behaviors. It says, if you do this, then this will happen. And so in this Bible portion, we are learning the natural laws of cause and effect, which in modern day, like new age kind of spirituality, we call karma. Karma basically says what comes around goes around, and that basically every action has a consequence, and that we need to be responsible and accountable for our behavior because whatever happens, it's something that is a result of what we've done. So in Hebrew, when you take the letters of the word karma and you rearrange them, you get rak mi Hashem, which means only from God. And when you arrange those letters, you get the word mikre, which means coincidence. So it means basically that there's no such thing as a coincidence that everything is from God, and that something that may seem as karma is actually divine providence. Another thing that appears in this week's Bible portion is the blessing after meals. And this is one of the only blessings that actually comes from the Torah. It says, It means, and you ate, and you were satiated, and you blessed the Lord your God. Of course, the grace that we say after meals is very long, and I'm sure that the rabbis have added their own um, blessings, but the origins of the grace after meals comes from this week's Bible portion. This week's Torah portion encompasses the date of the 15th of Av. The 15th of Av is known as the Jewish Valentine's Day, it is customarily a time when women wore white and they danced around in a circle and men would pick for themselves a bride from these uh, parading dancing women. And it is still a custom today that there are many Jewish singles parties and everybody wears white um, any time during this week of the 15th of August. I would like to speak a little bit about elevating the food in Judaism, we bless the food before we eat it, and then we thank God after we eat it. And I want to speak also about vegetarianism and humanity. Um, in Judaism, there is a high ideal also of vegetarianism. Although it is a custom to eat meat on holidays, we also regard vegetarianism as a lofty ideal. Judaism espouses humane treatment of all creatures and the way that the animals are slaughtered are supposed to cause the least amount of suffering to the animal. There is also the idea that animals as well as inanimate objects can have souls, um, human souls, that are trapped in them and that when we bless the food before we eat it and we thank God after we eat it, this helps the, the human soul to free it, to, to let it to ascend to heaven because it had some kind of correction that it needed to make, which is why it descended into this other form. But when we bless it and sanctify it and eat it, for example, in a ritual meal or in a holiday meal, we elevate the soul of that creature and we actually help it to ascend on high. So therefore, we could see that actually eating animal protein can have very lofty spiritual values. The following is a two minute video that I made which exemplifies this idea. I hope that you enjoy it. Reb Natan of Nemerov, Reb Nachman scribe, once had a dream in which he was told that a man would offer him a fish in the morning. He was to buy that fish and to take it at once to Reb Nachman. When he awoke, Reb Natan recalled his dream and wondered about it. Just then there was a knock at the door. 
A poor Jew stood there with a wagon load of fish. Reb Nathan saw that he was holding a single fish, a white one. He raised his hands, silently offering the fish to Reb Nathan. And Nathan, with the dream still vivid in his memory, gave him a substantial amount of money and thanked him for the fish with all his heart. Then Reb Nathan hurried to Reb Nachman. As soon as he came in, Reb Nachman said, where is the fish? Reb Nathan quickly handed the white fish to the Rebbe. Then Reb Nachman said, Your father came to me in a dream last night and told me that his soul had been placed inside this fish. If that fish were to be cooked for the Sabbath, the soul would be free to take its resting place in the world to come. So too his soul came to you unseen and whispered in your ear while you were asleep. That is how you knew not to turn away the fish seller. But who was the fish seller, Reb Nathan asked. Eliyahu Anavi, of course, Reb Nachman said. So it was that the fish was served for dinner that Shabbat, and the soul of Reb Nathan's father was set free to ascend on high. This story comes from Gabrielle's Palace. Jewish Mystical Tales, selected and retold by Howard Schwartz. Another one of the lessons from this week's Bible portion is that things that seem like minor things, small things, actually are very important. So we shouldn't overlook the small commandments and in favor of observing the big ones. And I talked about this in last week's Torah portion regarding the fact that we don't know the way that God does accounting. So somebody might keep certain commandments or precepts and think that they're doing a good job because they think maybe, for example, keeping kosher and keeping Shabbat you know, has very high value, but maybe they're disrespectful to their parents or they take other commandments for granted and they don't you know, act in kindness or... Um, other things that they thought were insignificant relatively. It says actually in the Talmud that there were two rabbis and they promised each other that whoever passed away first would tell the other one what it was like in heaven. So the first one passed away and the second one has a dream. So the first one comes to the second one in the dream and he tells him, The people that you thought were so high and holy in this world actually have a low place in the world to come and the people who you thought were lowly in this world actually have a high place in the world to come so this is the world of illusion nothing is what it seems someone who you might think is a sinner may be actually a saint in God's eyes and vice versa so it's very very important as Reb Shlomo Karlbach always emphasized to never ever judge have a restful Shabbat Bye-bye. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. Most, most, most sinful person is. You don't know where the sheer and the coming world. No, this is the.